I mean, really just where we left off in the spring. I mean, the summer we were just uh, doing a lot of conditioning, OTAs and everything, lifting and everything like that, everything else like that. But to be honest, we just picking up where we left off in the spring. We left off spring on a really good note football-wise with the pads clicking everything like that. So when it came to day one of fall camp, we just, we just rolled off on that standard. I mean, I mean, summer was there for us to, to get stronger, faster, and in shape. You know what I mean? Learn the you know the schematics and the mental side of football, and right now it's just he's just putting it all together. So like yeah, as I said, we just picking off a of spring. That's all. Coach Rule talks a lot about the importance of a, a player led team. Do you, you sense that has even grown this year compared to last? Yeah, I mean you got like wonderful guys like Giff, Ty, uh, Jamari. Um, who else? Uh, even Marquise, like it's, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of guys. I don't, like to be honest, I want to say, or even Nash as well. Like, there's no one set leader. Like, everybody has a voice to that team. Everybody can speak up and say what's right, what's wrong. Because why? Everybody knows what the standard looks like. Everybody knows what the standard is. I have an opportunity to say something. One of the um, sophomores, juniors, other seniors, six year seniors, fifth year seniors, every, even freshmen, if they know the standard, they, they can say it. You know what I mean? Everybody holds each other accountable. So, yeah, we're trying to be a player led team, and I do feel like we're taking the steps to be so. How does hearing the, uh, the motivating factors of a guy like, like Giff, you mentioned, um, who's been around this program for longer than he's been playing in it, how does that impact you guys who? I mean, Giff, Giff's impact is more so the fact that, um, yeah, he's an older guy, right? Been playing a lot of football. He's been around here a long time. Um, the, on, the only way I can say it is Giff's impact on the defense is major. You know what I mean? He's guys is always right on time with things. He knows his assignments, he knows how to execute, and that's the standard. You got to know your assignment, know your technique, then execute it. And, like, for me, per se, like, me looking at Giff, I mean, I'm – coming into the later years of my college career as well. And I'm trying to, you know, do what I got to do after. But still looking at Giff, it's more so like I'm looking at him and like he's someone that I want to be, not like a safety or anything like that, but he's someone I want to be as a leader. You know what I mean? He's someone that I admire when he and his, his work ethic, how he plays, how he talks, how he thinks. You know what I mean? Like in a sense where like we got different situations. I might rush the pass and got – you know, run 15 yards down the field. He might have to cover a fat, really fast receiver 45 yards down the field and do the same play again. You know, we can always, you know, complain about our woes and our falls, but if we just sit there and realize we both got our own weight on our own shoulders and we can both handle it and carry it very well, you know, we, and understand our importance to the defense, that's where we can go really far. So that's how that's how I really look at GIF. I mean, in my own perspective, that's how I look at GIF. But I just know GIF is a really, really important leader on our defense. What about all the fifth and sixth year guys back on the team in general? Why, why, why are so many people coming back? I mean, yourself included, when you could have moved on or, or whatever. Why are so many guys back? I mean, I wasn't going to move on regardless. But anywho, um, I just want to slight. Those guys who came back, I really feel like they just knew what was going to come of being here in the second year. I mean, we all felt it. Like, we all knew what was going on, like, last year, just trying to figure out the standard, trying to figure out how the coaches are, what the expectations and everything else like that. But in the sense where, like, people came back because they knew, like, man, if we just did these two little things, if we, you know, bought into the process a little more, even myself, you know what I mean? We just did those little things to kind of, you know, listen to what some of the coaches said. You know, it's not everything is just, just for talk. Everything kind of does relate to the process, adds up, and, and when it comes to big games, you know, and that's where the chasing three comes in. I mean, as I mean, chasing three is just not three simple points. We're not just chasing a field goal. It's all the little details that go into it, and that's where we kind of went in since the start of winter. That's what we try to start in and try to incorporate in football. And slowly but surely, we're doing that. MJ, how, how big of a talking point has been improving a four-man pass rush, getting home with four guys as opposed to just always having to rely on the blitz? How, how big is uh, an emphasis that's happening? It's been a pretty huge emphasis. I mean, like, having four guy, having a four-man rush and allowing the guys back there to cover 
it mean that'll be really great. That means more guys to cover, and like we don't gotta send a lot of people or do anything like that. And it makes it real easy on the defense as well. Coach White can call whatever you want to call, you know, forty family wise, and we just go there and rush. And that's been a really huge emphasis for us. And like, and we just gotta get back there, make disruption, create negative plays for the offense. Um, you know. Win on second down so we can have a harder time to win on third down, knocking them, out, knocking them out of certain areas of the field. And so we can just be the defense who can either score or give the offense a great position to score. So, yeah, it's been a huge emphasis. Are you still mainly at the Jack? Yes. Okay, so in the Jack room, it's me, Prince Will, Jordan Ochoa, um, Willis McGahey, the fourth, Isaiah, I mean, yeah, yeah, Flores Smith, yeah, if I'm saying this last name correct, yeah, Ishmael, Isaiah, yeah, my bad, Ishmael Flores Smith, and Maverick Noonan. That's, that makes up our Jack room. And... You talking about uh, Makai and Luke and Nick? I mean, yeah, they Luke and Nick left the standard here. That's that. That's the thing. They left the standard here in the linebacker room, how things are done, and everything else like that. But personally, in the Jack room, we just have a wonderful coach, who is Jack Potenza. He and you know he's been creating the plan for us for the win, you know, ever since the winter, honestly. Um, so like when it comes to experience and everything like that. We just rely on our coach, honestly. I rely on my previous experience. Prince Will relies on our previous experience. But all the other names I just mentioned, you know, they're, they're still trying to develop within the college football game. But at, at the same time, we're not just doing that on our own. We have a, once again, I said, we have a wonderful coach, Jack Potenza, and he's doing a really good job in, in coaching us, Jacks, and um, telling us, you know, developing the standard in that room. Uh, what it, what it needs to look like, what it's not supposed to look like, and everything else like that. And so we can go out in the field and just attack, 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 then be able to come back to meetings, look at film, and see what, what we did right and what we did wrong, or what needs a little bit of work and do better. Through your college career, you've seen how hard coaches like Jackson tend to work behind the scenes. How cool is it that those guys can be more involved now with the new ruling and you know, that, that he can have coaches the way he can? Uh, I'm not familiar with the new ruling. Oh, uh, shoot. I mean, that man's more than my ear and everything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Coach, as I said, Coach Jack, he always in my ear. He always coaching me up. Um, to be honest, all, all I'm always searching for is coaching. I mean, there's certain plays where I look directly at him sometimes instead of looking for the play call, which is a habit I need to break. But you know what I mean? But in practice, I always try to look for him to see, you know, what can I do a little bit better? If that was right, if that was wrong, if did I make the right decision? Not more of in a thinking aspect, but more so in like, you know, how can I get one step better, one percent better? So yeah, but like yeah, I mean, it it didn't make no difference to me. As I said, Jack always been in my ear. <laughs> yeah. What players wear the headset helmets on defense for you guys? I'm pretty sure the middle linebackers like John Bullock and um, uh, Javen Javen Bo uh, Javen Wright Budaman and um, Makai Bear, more likely so. I mean, Coach T. White, Coach Tony White, he loves to create chaos for us. He, nothing's going to be easy, so sometimes he might hold hold it a little bit and everything everything else like that. So I haven't really seen like a true benefit from it, especially as guy as a guy who always in the rush or with the D line front. And um, but understanding that, I do feel like it does have a benefit of getting the calls in quicker and everything else like that too. But as I said, he likes to create chaos, so nothing's going to be truly easy. So, yeah, that's all I can really say about that.